Thank you, Diana, and uh, welcome to the presentation, uh, Sustainability Right into the Product, a uh, concept presented on the basis of the modular armrest 225MA MIDI. So um, maybe some, some words about me. My name is Eduard Tsang. I am with Elubau for about 11 years, and um, I started in, the, in product management 2010. And since the beginning of this year, I am the head of uh, product management for the off-highway sector. So what exactly do we mean with uh, off-highway sector? So for us, it's um, mobile machinery. So like um, agricultural machines, for example, construction machines or material handling machines. And for those machines, um, we produce um, on the one hand sensors. So like, um, for example, angle or tilt sensors. And on the other hand, operate the controls like push buttons, multifunction joysticks, or um, complete multifunctional armrests. And at this point, um, I would like also to introduce you to our um, modular armrest 225MA MIDI. And um, as I already said, also with a special focus today uh, on the sustain sustainability. So why did we develop the armrest? Um, the Elubau is a specialist in, in developing and also manufacturing high quality um, operator controls. So also customized operator controls and um, customized armrest um, for big OEMs. And so what they get from us, the big OEMs, is uh, uh, armrest that is developed according to their needs um, with all the function they need, um, it's, it's programmed and end of line tested and um, yeah, delivered to be installed easily in the, into the machine. So for smaller customers, we have seen another picture on the market. Um, we have seen a lot of consoles which are, have hardwired components. Um, so it's quite a, a lot of work to, to uh, mount and implement the components and also hardwire it with a big cable harness, for example. So um, this, is, this was a situation that, that we thought, hey, um, we, we, can, we can help to improve this um, with a product like the modular armrest 225MA MIDI. So um, what we also could see is uh, a, a trend towards more and more armrest um, in different, in different uh, mobile machines in the market. So with the target to summarize the operator controls, uh, bringing the operator controls closer to the operator and having a better ergonomic and um, also an, an easier um, ex uh, using experience. So with our um, modular armrest, um, we, we achieved um, to improve um, the operator comfort on the one side because the components and the products that we use in the armrest, they're um, on the one hand uh, ergonomic themselves. So like, for example, our uh, multifunctional handle uh, that you can see here, um, which is um, ergonomically fitted to, to the right hand. Um, and they're also in the armrest, they're arranged in an ergonomic way and they're clear, clearly arranged so it's easy to um, find the functions and um, it's easier to identify the necessary functions that I want to operate. So on the other side, we also um, had the target to have a high quality armrest. So we have innovative materials, um, sustainable materials, uh, bio-based uh, plastics that we use in there. We have uh, ro really robust um, technology and, and products um, that we use in there. Um, and we, uh, the customer gets a, a process safe armrest, which is end of line tested and um, minimizes uh, failures um, throughout the whole um, process. So um, the next thing is also that we have um, with the with the the armrest, um, it is really 
easy to integrate. Yeah, so it's based on a CAN bus. Um, the customer gets the, the armrest and he connects it to the CAN bus. He can configure it. He can also, through the software protocol, he can also change um, modules so he can uh, switch them on or off um, in case he wants uh, to, to handle some variants himself. So, um, and then on the other side, the customer also has um, less to do with the documentation. So, because we developed the armrest already according to um, uh, agriculture performance level C, um, ISO 25119. Uh, so, um, this is a, the, the safety standard the um, armrest is developed to. So, there is less um, work on that side as well. And um, we have a modular armrest, so the different modules can be configured um, on a, in an online um, configurator to make the armrest really fit um, to to the to the requirements of the mobile machine. Okay, so let's have a quick look on the functions of the armrest. So if we have a look below here. Um, you can see, for example, the, the hand throttle, um, which you could use for controlling the engine speed. Um, we have also uh, the multifunction handle here, the 361 um, mounted on a J4, which could be, for example, used for uh, driving functions. Um, and we have the compact uh, joystick J2 over here with the multifunction handle um, that are typically used for front, front loader functions, for example, in a tractor. Um, then in the middle uh, part of the armrest, you can see um, different modules uh, mounted. So uh, one module is the encoder push button module over here that you can use for controlling um, display functions, for example. Yeah, it's uh, also the, the encoder has a push function for uh, confirmation um, and then three push buttons for, for other functions. Um, you can you can choose um, two push button modules and um, the, these two push button modules, um, they uh, so on the push buttons, you can also have symbols. You can have function and night illuminations. The symbols um, are available in different uh, colors. So for example, um, typically the driving uh, functions, they, they are in orange and um, you have um, then the possibility to use it. Um, it's, it's also, there is um, a big choice of symbols in the uh, online configurator as well. And then um, you, can, you can see, for example, the um, PTO switches here um, so there's two versions um, of it so um, one is really for the PTO function for example of a tractor but then there is another one um, that you could use for um, for the park brake function for example and with the fingertip joysticks there's typically um, the hydraulic functions of attachments uh, controlled so um, then we have also additional uh, controls over here. So a hitch wheel, um, for example, for a height regulation um, of an attachment and an additional potentiometer. Um, so you can see it's, it's really a lot of functions and you can control uh, every function um, of a tractor, for example, because, and, and uh, tractors are like um, very multifunctional machines also with a lot of uh, functions needed and a lot of operator controls needed. So, and with this armrest, it's possible to, to summarize everything in a, a quite a compact uh, way and still having a, a clear overview about, uh, of the functions. Okay, and then there is, um, under uh, the armrest, um, there is a storage compartment with additional functions. So any function that is not needed very often, for example, some setting functions or something like that, they could uh, be placed here. And um, in addition, you can also charge your phone with this um, USB uh, charging socket um, over here. Okay, so now as we um, already um, know a little bit more about the armrest, let's have a look about the, the uh, on the sustainability side of the armrest. So, because Elobau 
is uh, already quite famous um, on, on company level, according to sustainability. So um, we are uh, climate neutral, our production is climate neutral um, since 2010. <coughs> and um, this is, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's also very positive for our uh, products, of course, um, because in this case we can manufacture our products um, climate neutral. And um, on the company level, we achieved this with uh, first step, uh, the reduction uh, of emissions. So we continuously try to reduce our uh, emissions and it's um, for uh, some examples are that um, we have uh, electric company cars, uh, for example, and um, our new buildings, they are energy, uh, they fulfill an energy plus standard, so um, they produce more energy than they need. And um, th these are some examples of um, how we try to, to reduce our emissions. On the other side, um, we also have uh, only uh, renewable energy that we use. Um, so we have 100% uh, uh, green power that we use um, for, for our company and um, we have an own uh, solar park and we don't use any fossil fuel for, uh, for heating, for example. But um, of course, there is still some unavoidable emissions that, um, that we produce and to compensate those emissions, um, we are um, also participating in different projects um, for uh, reforestation, um, like Plant for the uh, Planet or, or different others. Okay, so this, uh, this was the first positive <coughs> point um, uh, effect on our products, of course, the, that the company is already very sustainable and cl uh, climate neutral, but um, at some point in 2012, we have thought, OK, what could be the next step? How can we bring the sustainability um, uh, to a product level? And um, this was when we started first analysis to figure out, OK, what possibilities do we have? And um, one point was um, back then already uh, bio-based plastics. OK, so then in 2014, we started um, a, a study on the substitution potential of conventional plastics by bioplastics in our product. So we had a look at um, yeah, the, the, the bioplastics out there and um, whether some could fit or not. And then 2016, we really um, uh, we, we had another uh, study and um, the target was to really um, define uh, bio-based plastics um, for for the MIDI armrest and also to validate it. So to prepare everything that we can use those materials in our uh, modular armrest. So and um, this is uh, what we have been doing then also. <coughs> but um, in parallel, we also had a look on on the life. Uh, so we did a life cycle assessment on an Elobau joystick just to see um, from the from the raw material um, through the whole process, so for the complete life cycle of a product, um, where are the main levers where we can move or push sustainability forward in the product? So um, we had a, uh, the the life cycle is from the raw material over to uh, production, transport, packaging. Um, the use of the product then, and also um, the disposal. And as you can see here, it is um, in the, the biggest lever, so um, are in the production and especially uh, in the upstream value chain. So all the supply parts um, that we get, uh, there is there is a bit high potential um, to reduce the, the carbon footprint of a product. <coughs> So if our supplier um, has also um, a, a carbon neutral production, for example, or um, we, we use bio-based plastics for our products, so then we can um, really, uh, we, we have a, a big lever here. Um, and the other one is of course the use of the product. Um, so this means um, the, the product um, needs to be 
um, very durable um, repairability uh, and also of course the application where we um, where we sell it to has an influence so for example um, if we have an uh, electric uh, mobile machine um, which has uh, no emissions uh, or, or lower uh, emissions then it's uh, better uh, for us than if it's a, a conventional uh, mobile machine and um, there the calculation is made um, through the weight so um, they they um, see what weight the machine has and um, in relation uh, what what emissions uh, it it produces and um, then compared to that um, they they look at what weight our product has and um, then they calculate in relation the the emission um, the the percentage of the emissions of the mach machine according to the to the weight also so um, the lower the weight of our products the the better for for the uh, footprint as well okay and what what have we done for the modular armrest now as we understand a little bit more what uh, what we could have been doing and what is um uh, interesting in terms of uh, sustainability to to be changed um and uh, now um, i would like to show you what we really have done so what we have have been doing is we have used uh, or we are using 75% of the of the plastic parts in the armrest are bio-based plastics. Um, and through that we achieve 46% um, of uh, carbon savings. So uh, compared to the um, conventional plastics. In addition to that, we had also um, a really close look from the beginning of the um, of the uh, development of the armrest um, on the repairability and also the durability of the um, of the armrest, and um, then also we had a look on on further materials on sustainable materials that we could use that are out there on the market, and one of those um, was the apple leather that um, we we use uh, for the for the armrest itself back here. Okay, I'm sure there's now uh, at least uh, one or two questions like, um, what is bio-based plastics? <clears throat> so this is why I prepared this slide for you. Um, I mean, bio-based uh, plastics um, usually is based on um, castor beans. So this plant you can see over here it's um, castor and you can grow it with uh, you can grow it really easy with few water and so on and from from the beans um, of the plant you can make oil so you 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 would do the this castor oil and you use um, also um, conventional oil um, a, a small percentage so this is just an example, 70% of castor oil and then 30% of conventional oil. And you mix all together and from this uh, oil you uh, make granulate. Um, so, and then it's injection molded uh, and you get um, the plastic parts that we need for the uh, midi armrest. Then maybe a second question could be, what, what is apple leather? So um, apple leather is <coughs> made from the uh, rests uh, from the apple juice production. So everything that um, is left over after uh, the apple juice uh, production is um, yeah, processed to, to a powder and um, then it's mixed with an uh, organic um, organic binder and um, this uh, mix is then um, yeah applied to a, to a substrate so maybe it's it's also necessary to say at this point that this organic uh, binder is um, made from milk protein so there is no 
um, no additional uh, material needed, that, which is oil based or, or conventional plastic or anything like that. Um, so this mixture is um, then applied to a substrate and it's baked out. So the substrate is made from cotton. It's baked out at around 130 degrees and afterwards um, yeah, it's uh, possible um, to to give them uh, the the leather profile through uh, embossing, for example, and um, afterwards you get your uh, leather for armrests. And um, yeah, the validation showed that it's um, as good as as any um, uh, other uh, material that we used for armrests before. Okay, so. Let's have a, a closer look at the durability of of, um, of the armrest. Um, so, <clears throat> what our at the first place we we had a look at at the lifetime of a tractor. So, and the tractor is typically designed for um, ten thousand hours. Um, so, this is what what our minimum um, target was: ten thousand machine hours. Um, and we we definitely achieved it that the, the, all the components can last at least ten thousand machine hours um, without uh, yeah any any, th any service or anything necessary. Um, <clears throat> what uh, what we also have here is we have uh, field proven products. Yeah, we have products that are. Um, that are already out there in in mobile machines. We have a very good experience about um, uh, how how they work, and um, we we can tell they work in the um, in in this field of uh, mobile machinery. And um, what what we also do is we use contactless sensor technology. Um, contactless sensor uh, technology doesn't wear off, so um, there is no need to. To chain uh, to change it at any point, and in addition, you can also quite good, um, yeah, uh, seal the the technology so dust or water can cannot um, influence it. And um, we of course also did uh, really extensive environmental tests uh, on it, um, from our experiences uh, from from the the big OEM projects also where we also do all the environmental and si life cycle testings. Um, we created a, a, a test plan here, which really shows that the armrest is um, durable, <clears throat> at least for the lifetime um, of the tractor, but um, ideally, of course, uh, longer. So if there's in any case um, parts need to be changed, we had a, a really uh, close look also on the on the repairability of the armrest. So um, we re we created a repair concept um, and, and developed a create uh, uh, repair concept right from the beginning on. So we really had a look at um, uh, enabling the, the exchangeability. So we, we needed to make sure that if you open the armrest, you really have a good chance and it's easy to change the parts and that everything is reachable, <clears throat> that you can identify which cables go where and um, everything. So, and everything is described. And um, that, what is also very important is the challenge that if you open the armrest, typically the warranty would um, would be finished. But um, we achieved it with uh, the repair manual and a really good instruction to um, so that you can open the armrest without losing warranty, and also you're not losing the conformity of the safety standard, which was um, the biggest challenge. Um, yeah, and yeah, you everybody can can uh, so uh, yeah have the repair manual, and um, it's possible to open the armrest from our customers' uh, side or even their customers' side. Um, open the armrest, um, follow the repair manual. It's everything is described um, with pictures also, um, it's available online and um, yeah, you can change the part you need. So we defined also, of course, spare part modules that you can um, purchase and, and uh, change the armrest without having 
um, to uh, to send it uh, back to to Elobau and then uh, wait for for the repair and and so on. So it's possible to do the um, the the service uh, yourself. Okay, but um, at this point, um, it's it's not the end. So we can still see a lot of potential there for the sustainability in in products and. <clears throat> what uh, we did is uh, we did another study lately, which was uh, finished, I think, some some days ago. Um, we did the eco design study for operating armrests, and um, with this study, we had a look at the the um, modular armrest, the the two to five MA MIDI, and then we thought, okay, what could we change um, and what potential is there still um, for improvement according to sustainability? And um, yeah, so we really try to think out of the box. <clears throat> so the the aim, one of the, the aims was eight reduction. And as you can see, it was 8% per of the weight that could be reduced. Um, and uh, for example, it was uh, achieved through, um, of course, having a look, a close look on the functions that are needed. Are there every functions needed and so on? But also like um, you can see back here, the armrest that we have in the MIDI is uh, with a, uh, a plastic carrier and then a leather structure on top and so on. And here it's just like <clears throat> some sort of um, other innovative material, a net or something, um, which is very, uh, yeah, it's it's not heavy at all. So um, this is one example. And then, um, of course, it's, uh, yeah, we, we achieved 40% uh, carbon savings um, compared with the MIDI armrest. And um, the the way how we achieved that was, of course, um, the the weight reduction on the one hand. On the other side, one example is to use a, a, a recyclate. So um, a material, um, a, a, a recycled uh, plastic material, um, that we use again uh, for for a new part. And um, this is this is uh, what also helps a lot in terms of uh, sustainability. And then, of course, the the other aspects have been um, looked into um, also very closely, um, like uh, durability and so on. But um, another thing is also the uh, environmental friendly recycling, for example. So and. There, it's all also very interesting to to have a closer look in the materials that you use, because if you have, um, for example, a fiber, fiber, uh, glass fiber reinforced plastic, um, this material is harder to recycle than, for example, a stainless steel frame, which is much easier to recycle. Um, so. Yeah, this this is uh, kind of the ideas that have been uh, shared within this uh, project, and um, yeah, as I said, the result was forty percent um, of CO two savings um, compared to the modular uh, Armrest two to five MA MIDI. Yeah, so uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention.